this afternoon. My name is Kelly Nash from uh, 103.5 WVOC, and it's an honor to be with you this afternoon. Uh, we are excited that you've joined us, and we have some uh, uh, great speeches and dignitaries to talk to you here for just a moment. Uh, and But before we get started, I'd like to introduce the uh, director of ministry to the Slavic people with his wife, Arena. They've been very active serving Christians in the Ukraine. This is Alex Pomerov. Thank you very much, and um, I'm honored uh, to be part of uh, this event. Uh, let's bow our hands and pray. Lord, creator, sustainer and ruler of the universe, you are our shepherd, and you feed us like a flock. You are our father, and you guard, you guard us as our own dear children. Whatever times of great trouble come, you remember us. In all your judgments, you remember your mercy towards your people. Father's eye is lovingly fixed upon your children. You, Lord, are our refuge, our castle and high tower, our defender and provider. Your heart cares for us every moment. Please help us to see it, draw us near to you. You patiently hear your us and efficiently help us. Whenever there is any evil to come upon the land, you, God, know all about it. For you know everything. Please provide for your children a shelter in the time of storm. When Solomon had finished the temple, the Lord appeared to him and said, If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Lord, heal our land, we humbly pray. Open our, open your eyes and ears to our cry. Pardon our sins of commission and omission. Help us to trust in your power and mercy without fear. In Jesus Christ's name, our personal Savior, Lord and God, we pray. Amen. All right, thank you. Now, uh, Arena, were you going to do the Pledge of Allegiance? All right, please welcome her. Uh, please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, and I understand that we have Dr. Richard Conant with us to do the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and the bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, they proved through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. That was awesome. Thank you so much, sir. 
And now to play the Ukrainian anthem. I understand that we have Jackson Gossett who is going to uh, play it off his phone for us. Thank you. Thank you, Jackson. Okay, it's time for our first speaker, and uh, I'm thrilled to welcome the Attorney General Alan Wilson, veteran of serving a year with the field artillery in Iraq uh, eight years ago, elected as America's youngest Attorney General. The, uh, his wife is Jennifer Miskowitz, a grateful Polish-American heritage. Alan's going to read a letter from retired Army General Mick Zais, who is the former president of Newberry College and elected statewide as superintendent of education, being the first Ukrainian-American elected to statewide office in South Carolina. Due to prior commitments, uh, Mick cannot join us. So Alan will read a letter now from Mick Zais. Actually, Kelly, it was 11 years ago. Uh, oh, I just read without the script. Yeah, uh, it, 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 it feels like 20 years ago some days, but it is great to be all of you. I want to thank uh, our congressman, uh, who happens to also be my father, Joe Wilson, for inviting me here today. Um, as a member of the United States military, obviously I understand firsthand the geopolitical implications. I understand the international security issues involved, as well as the national security issues involved with uh, the aggression that we're seeing on the borders of Russia and the Ukraine. And that's why I'm incredibly excited today to stand up here, a bipartisan way to show South Carolina support of Ukraine. It may not seem like much of a gesture to be here today on the steps with these folks up here on, on the steps of the State House, but a pebble thrown into a lake will ripple out. And, and, and this symbolic gesture will have ripples that will reverberate across the state and to send a message that we as one people will stand with those who seem like so far away Ukraine doesn't seem like it would have any bearing on what happens here in South Carolina, but I can tell you right now, if you appease aggression in Eastern Europe, it will find its way to your doorstep, and you don't have to go too far back in history to understand that concept. I was asked today to come in and read, as, as Kelly mentioned, a letter. Uh, as he said, General, former Superintendent Mick Zace could not be here due to a prior planned trip to London, but I'm going to read this letter on behalf of General Zace. In the late 1890s, my grandparents arrived in America as children, their parents having fled Eastern Europe in the face of pogroms raging against the Jews. At that time, almost all of Eastern Europe was part of what was then known as the Russian Empire. Since then, wars, famines, and other conflagrations have swept across the region, consuming the lives of scores of millions, creating and eliminating nations and redrawing the borders of countries such as Prussia, Germany, Poland, Russia, Belarus, and the Ukraine. Some have to describe war as diplomacy by other means. Others would characterize it as a harsh demonstration of the limits of diplomacy. Whatever your definition, war is always an abomination and peace only exists until both sides agree to it. It is tragic that yet again the Ukrainian people are facing naked aggression against their sovereign lands. Such a confrontation benefits no one 
except perhaps a small clique of the ruling oligarchs of Russia. In the face of this crisis, I am proud to stand with Congressman Joe Wilson and other representatives and other public servants and citizens who are here today to demonstrate their support for and solidarity with the Ukrainian people. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney General Alan Wilson. Now we're going to welcome a former uh, Democrat, excuse me, former Democratic member of the whoop, State House. <laughs> ah, let's get that up here. And also a Democratic governor candidate, former veteran from Afghanistan, who's here to read a letter from Representative Beth Bernstein. This is James Smith. Thank you, Kelly. I am pleased to be here on behalf of my Dear friend and former colleague, Representative Beth Bernstein, she regrets that she cannot be here. She had a loss in her family, uh, but she wanted us all to know that she is here in spirit with us. Um, and in talking with her, I've put together some remarks to share with you all. I also want to thank uh, Congressman Wilson for his leadership in bringing us all together today uh, for this important gathering. But we are, we are not here as Republicans and Democrats, but as South Carolinians and as Americans, standing united in support of, Ukraine, of the Ukrainian people, because it is Putin's actions that have threatened the long-standing peace and unprecedented prosperity in Eastern Europe. Our President Joe Biden has made it clear the principles of our nation's support for Ukraine. They are who we are, and they have, are what we've always stood for. That we are united in supporting Ukraine's independence sovereignty and territorial integrity. We are united in supporting Ukraine's right of self-determination to include the right as an independent nation to enter treaties and agreements with other nations of its choosing. We, as a free nation, are committed to strengthening our relationship with Ukraine and support of a prosperous future for all. And to quote our Secretary of State, Tony Blinken, we are resolute that a democratic, prosperous, and secure Ukraine is in the interest not only of the people of Ukraine, but also of the United States and the international community. So no matter what we hear from the Kremlin, no matter the words that come from Putin's mouth, the fact is this, NATO is a defensive alliance. There is no risk that a NATO country would threaten the territorial integrity of Russia. And no matter what we see and hear over the next hours and days, let there be no mistake that it is Putin and Putin alone who will be wholly responsible for the bloodshed and violence that will fall on both ethnic Russians and Ukrainian lives should he invade Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you, James. All right, now, Congressman Joe Wilson is the ranking member of the Organization for Cooperation in Europe, the Helsinki Commission, member of the Foreign Affairs Committee and Armed Services Committee, 31-year Army National Guard veteran judge advocate, Congressman Joe Wilson. Thank you, Kelly. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here today. I want to thank all the participants, every single person that I contacted when I told them that we would be standing with solidarity with Ukraine. Everybody immediately said, let's participate Let's show our support of Ukraine, and uh, let's do all that we can to deter an invasion uh, by Russia uh, or by Putin. Uh, it's really appropriate that I'm here in that when I had the opportunity to serve in the state Senate, I hired the first Russian page to serve in the state Senate. Uh, he was from St. Petersburg. I had the opportunity to visit with his family. Uh, and so I had such high hopes uh, that the United States and Russia would uh, work together on behalf of the, the world, for uh, stability, for economic progress, for jobs worldwide. Uh, additionally, I had the opportunity with Mayor Bob Koble, who will be speaking in a moment. He and I went to Moscow. We went to Chelyabinsk, uh, which is the sister city of Colombia. Uh, I actually had the opportunity to visit Novosibirsk, where we were welcomed with a sign in English that said, welcome to Novosibirsk, the Chicago of Siberia. And so sadly, uh, Russia has evolved due to the authoritarian rule of Vladimir Putin. He has, uh, with his oligarchs, have really abused the people of Russia. 
and uh, now he is attempting to take over Ukraine. And I have uh, present, prevented, uh, presented to you an op-ed that I uh, had uh, printed in the Washington Times two weeks ago, and it's sadly very clear that this affects American families because the whole intent of what Mr. Putin is doing is to, to take over the supplies of oil to the 44 million people of Ukraine and then to proceed to take over and control the oil to uh, Germany through Nord Stream 2. And so I am just grateful that indeed it's bipartisan. Uh, I want to quote uh, from uh, Tuesday, President Biden. He said to the citizens of Russia, you are not our enemy. I do not believe that a, you want a bloody destructive war against Ukraine, a country and a people with whom you share such deep ties of family, history, and culture. President Biden also continued, and again, this is the ultimate bipartisan. And because of this, more than just Russia and Ukraine, it's about standing for what we believe in, for the future that we want, for our world, for liberty, for liberty, the right of countless countries to choose their own destiny, to the right of the people to determine their own futures. For the, that principle can't change a country's neighbor's borders by force. And finally, when it comes to Nord Stream 2, the President's made it clear that if there is an invasion, Nord Stream 2 will not be completed. And uh, we will uh, maintain the independence that we have for our very dear and uh, significant allies throughout uh, Europe and NATO and uh, around the world. And so I'm just grateful to be here today and uh, for everybody working together. And I'm just <clears throat> hopeful we can send a message uh, to Vladimir Putin that the people of the United States uh, he has done something really inadvertent. I mentioned this at an organization of security corporation in Europe. Uh, he has done something that is uh, really good. He has united Republicans and Democrats to stand firm uh, against aggression. And then I'm really grateful this week, uh, the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz was in uh, Kiev on Monday and he was in Moscow on Tuesday. And so there's been an effort to try to divide Germany from NATO, from the United States, uh, from uh, OSCE. It's not being successful. Mr. Putin has actually united the world on behalf of ending aggression anywhere in the world. Thank you, and God bless you, and I'm happy everybody's here. And if there are any questions, I, I will do that after we hear very uh, wonderful comments from Mayor Bob Coble. All right. Thank you, Congressman. And uh, as he alluded, the former mayor of Columbia is with us. He led the city delegation to Moscow, and he's warned me to not attempt this word, but I will give it a shot. Chelyabinsk, to enter a sister city relationship to promote warm relations with the people of Russia and America. This is the former mayor of Columbia, Bob Coble. Thank you, Kelly. You did a great job with that pronunciation. General, Congressman, Representative Smith, and others, let me say in the late 1990s, we took a trip to Chelyabinsk, Russia, our sister city at the time, of course. Prior to that, we went to Plovdiv, Bulgaria, and uh, Kaluzh, Napoca, Romania. Then State Senator Joe Wilson and his son, wonderful son, Ad, who I know is still in the Navy and a physician, were on that delegation. Uh, many of the issues then are the same issues now. Uh, this was the end of the Yeltsin era before Putin got there. Uh, they had... Uh, for Bulgaria and Romania, they wanted to be in NATO and did in 2004. Uh, you could tell the quest for freedom was very strong there. And the friendship with the Russian people in Chelyabinsk was also uh, very obvious and a lot of economic ties. Uh, we are saddened, I know the Congressman is, and I know I certainly am, to see where we've come from there and uh, what has happened to Russia and our relationship. Uh, we think uh, for a number of things, uh, partnership and hope uh, was what we felt then, uh, and it just has not worked out, and it's because of Putin. Uh, today I'm the chair of the Columbia World Affairs Council, and this Tuesday uh, the Palmetto Forum will be understanding the Russian-Ukraine crisis. In addition to the obvious moral and security issues that are at stake with this crisis, there's also one of economics. Being part of the global economy is very important to South Carolina. And 
this crisis manufactured entirely by Putin threatens that economy for not only South Carolina, but the world. And that's a shame and we need to stand united. And in today's world, you don't see many bipartisan Democrat, Republican uh, press conferences, but this is one that's important. It's important to all of us and we need to keep that uh, going and work hard for it. Thank you so very much. Thank you, sir. And uh, thank you to Congressman Wilson for organizing this. Thank you to all of our great speakers for coming out. If uh, any members of the press or anybody else has questions, they're going to join you out in front here in just a moment. But again, thank you for joining us today. And uh, may God bless the United States and, of course, the Ukraine as well.